all you fine bronies and Pegasisters, welcome to the NBS show. I am your temporary host, the man, the myth, the hippogriff, Silver Quill. But I have not caused a coup or anything, because with me is podcaster and planeswalker extraordinaire, Norman Sanzo. You know, this show could be better if you guys did this, you know, like, add more stars and whatnot, like, yeah. Yeah. And we also have Sapphire Heart Song. The head is too big. I haven't heard that since my birth. <laughs> there we go. Hi. It's a it's a rare event where I can get Safi to laugh like that. Usually she's more of the re variety. <laughs> oh my goodness. She, you might say she reveals I'm her anger. I'm generous today. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Would you like me to re? <laughs> Well, we could always talk more about your D&D and your flaming sword. <laughs> Ree! Only the Patreons will know. Frick you. I, I have I have a very nice sword that is perfect for brewing coffee. Anyways. <laughs> because it's so flaming. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. But Silver, what are you going to do for today? <laughs> Okay, so I was like, get back on track, let's abandon this <laughs> as fast as possible. We're going to have a little discussion. I don't know if you, if most of you folks at home realize this, but we here on the MBS show fancy ourselves reviewers. La gasp! Mm. It usually means we give feedback, but there's an art to feedback where how you present it really impacts how it is received. And on the internet, a lot of people think, well, I'll just throw all this stuff at the person, and if they can't instantly agree to it, then they're just too sensitive. Thus, we have what I call negative criticism. Because criticism on its own can be, I liked this, I didn't like this so much. Here's what you did well, here's what you could do better. Negative criticism is just, what did you do wrong? Or, sometimes, what did I not like, and therefore, if I didn't like it, it can't be good. Does that seem a fair assessment to both of you? Yep, yep, sounds fair enough. Sure. (laughs) So, when... When you have this interweb filled to the gills with negativity, is there any value in it or should you dismiss it outright? And there, this is uniquely timed. For you see, within the last few days of this recording, a comic artist and recent IDW comic artist, Pony Berserker, posted a comic called Sins of the Many. I am posting a link in the MBS show chat right now mm-hmm. so that everyone can see it would help if I got the window open. There we go. But there are two panels in this, which shows a pony basically cursing and one guest OC saying, rude criticism is never fun, but it's not always invalid. So don't dismiss it just because it's rude. It's best not to respond, but you should at least consider what's being said. Secondly, another pony cursing while uh, smoking a cigarette. Filthy habit. The internet can be a brutally honest place sometimes. If you upload things, you're going to have to deal with trolls, critics, and clowns. Clowns is in bold. Mm -hmm. Use it as an opportunity to become a stronger pony slash person. Now, also, and this is uniquely timed, I just saw Bohemian Rhapsody, the movie. Oh, my. Which featured reactions by critics. Nobody loves me. She's just a poor girl from a poor family. But Well, that's very true. Oh, dear. Well, but the the movie, it quoted critics reacting to Bohemian Rhapsody, oh. and they were brutally dismissive. Really? No. They're just trying to be a poor man's Led Zeppelin. Think about that for a minute. The Bohemian Rhapsody, a song that has charmed everyone, and it receives very harsh feedback. So, here's the thing. I think Pony Berserker raises a valid point in that you shouldn't just dismiss what someone is saying, uh because they phrased it poorly at the same time that if i believe these quotes for bohemian rhapsody are true just because someone's being negative doesn't mean they're right true that especially for the song bohemian rhapsody it is legendary but it is true the internet itself is a hotbed of commentary reaction and dehumanization both in people dehumanizing the the target of their ire but also taking the human element out of communication. If someone writes a a comment, I I appreciate it, but I can't discern your tone of voice. I can't see your facial expressions. 
I am operating with reduced inputs and limited awareness. So it's, it can be very easy to misinterpret what might seem like a joke comes off as a harsh critique. What comes across as trying to be supportive may say, seem more hostile. And on the internet, it's very easy to assume hostility. That is true. That is true. Whenever you read something or look at something, especially in the YouTube comments, especially if it's a quote-unquote smarky joke, it comes off as very snark and negative. Like, it's really, really bad. And so there's the question of when is negative criticism warranted, or at least when it has some value, and do, how hard do you have to pick it apart to get to that value? So let's let's start with just maybe some story time. I'm going to share uh, a critique I received way, way, way back when, when I was part of the Digimon fandom. Ooh, wow, that, that's pretty old. Ooh. Wow. Really, Norman? You're going to play that card? No, man, like I Digimon fandom. Sam. Like uh, I expect that from Safi, but not from you. But uh, Digimon fandom, like, <laughs> <laughs> like how long was that, man? Like, that, which version of the Digimons? This was when Zero Two had just wrapped up its uh, its run. Okay, not gonna say anything more. Go ahead, st- story time. <laughs> no, no, I feel like I feel like it's a musical cue. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> But uh, this person w- w- read one of my stories and he's like, oh, I heard so much about you. It turns out it's just hype. Uh, you're, you're boring. It's just a it's just a repetitive. He said, she said, and I don't like your OCs. You shouldn't try. Don't try. Just go to the Digimon Encyclopedia and use the characters there. And at the time, that really shook me because because it, it was very harsh, very much aimed at not at not improving the craft but rather discouraging. When someone says, don't try, that is the most worthless critique of all. Yeah. The, I mean, from your description or from your retelling of that quote or that comment there, I kind of pick apart some of the negatives, like, oh, it's a lot of he says, she says, so that means your story comes off as this person's talking, that person's talking, so there's nothing in between as more talking. In all honesty, I like those kind of stories, but that's just me. And your OC, uh, you inserted a new character in, and like I mentioned before, there's a lot of picking apart to make the story much better. And in all honesty, the commenter didn't really did a good job in helping you improve. It's more like, you're right good, but you could improve. Also, don't insert original characters, just use the show canon, because nobody really likes original characters. Which I, I will never really support the uh, no one likes OCs. That's mostly people make OCs because they want to participate. And guess what? Every character in, that is introduced in a show you like is, in a sense, an original character. After all, you made them. Or someone made them. Someone in the show staff made this character. Therefore, it is their original character. Aha! Hmm. But you're right, Norman, that there were elements in there. Like maybe saying he said, she said... I could go back and look at the story and say, you know what, maybe a little bit descriptive or have them performing actions while they hold this conversation would be more engaging. But there's also a compliment in there. This person was saying, you're not as good as everyone says you are. And I could take away from that, hey, people are hyping me up. Mm -hmm. People are saying my work is really good. Sure, here's one negative Nelly, but that's not the whole story. I did not have that perspective at the time. I was feeling more assaulted and more defensive. But it's true. Here's the thing. When it comes to the babies we love, like, (laughs) um, how do I put this? Um, When we create something, especially us content creators, we create something and we work hard in creating our work. We put a lot of time and effort into it. And once we release it into the wilds, and hope that people will like it, suddenly we get a negative comment and we grow salty over it. We think to ourselves, oh, I pour a lot of effort into this and how dare you? Oh, rage, adamantium rage. And we get um, red, uh, misty red eyes and uh, get that mist rage in our eyes and be very aggressive and very defensive of our work. But once you look at that comment from afar and break it apart, 
you'll see where they're coming from and you'll understand that, huh, okay, that is true. I may need to work on that. And, well, for me personally, I would just say, okay, I'll try to work on it. Thank you for the comment. Thank you, thank you for taking your time to comment on this. And that's just me. But when we're in the heat of the moment, sometimes we don't really think about it. But, hey, that's just me. Well, you're, you're more polite than I, Norman. I would... I would not reply to such a uh, critique here and now because I don't feel the person has earned that level of dialogue. If they're not willing to put in the effort to craft a message, I do not owe them a reply. I give it a little time and maybe a chance to cool off. I may take their advice or I may dismiss it, but I'm not going to thank them for doing such a poor job. (laughs) Okay. And that's the thing. I mean... Just describing that uh, critique, look at how much energy has to put into sifting through to find the nuggets of stuff I can actually utilize, where I think the intent of this person genuinely was to try and discourage me, to say, screw you, you shouldn't be writing, which is, at the end of the day, a truly worthless message. Nothing will get you nothing. Nothing comes from nothing. True that, true that. And here's the thing, I kind of feel for that person commenting, probably he was jelly of your hype and whatnot, and that's why he said those mean things. Well, it might have been a case of jealousy, or it might have been simply this person wanted to troll. There's been some online studies. Uh, there have been psychologists have actually brought trolls in to uh, interview and try and understand their perspective. And some people genuinely enjoy seeing other people destroyed. They like seeing something beautiful brought down. It's just something about their mentality. So it's very possible that, well, Norman, you're a very kind person to see the positive or maybe the humane side. There is always the option that this person just wanted to be cruel. It's just, sometimes that's just the way of it. They wanted to be in... That's not a word! Oh, boys. But maybe we should have story time. Yes, yes. This is not a requirement, but would either of you like to share an experience with a very negative critique? You experienced in the past? Uh, for me, um, doing the MBS show for almost six years. Have I been doing it for six years now? Let me see. Um, 2012 to 18. How long is that, by the way? Matthew, six, six years. Six years. All right. So doing this for almost six years now. And I don't really get that much comment, surprisingly. But when I do get them, it's very from positive to negative and when I do get negative comments, I kind of read over them and see where they're getting at. And usually negative comments come from uh, people disliking the episode. Not our episode, but the episode that we're reviewing. And sometimes it's just, oh, my stuff, like how the recording quality is and whatnot. And from that point on, I just tell them or I just reply to them oh I'm sorry it's one of these situations where I couldn't really control it Um, we'll try better next time so that's how I deal with it and personally for me uh, I remember way back when when James was on he mentioned oh don't reply to the comments it's useless and whatnot and I kind of followed through with that line of thinking till I didn't and somehow that helped me with the MBS show getting more out there. It's a show where the creators are listening to you. They're replying to your comments and they're interacting with you. So yay, bonus points for me. I'm not sure how you guys are. Seppi, what about you? Any experience with this? Well, well, whenever I like get a reply of, like on a tweet and whatnot, unless I like don't really have anything to say or they're not like directly talking to me, I really don't like you know respond to every single tweet, you know. Mm. Oh, but yeah, I... I try to like if somebody like tries to talk to me directly, like if they have something to say to me, then okay, I'll I'll try to respond because you know I just like I like it when people like me. <laughs> As as narcissistic as that might be. It's like, I like it when people like me. It makes me feel good. True, true. Oh, what's that Phil, what's that <laughs> Phil Collins song? I love to be loved. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love to be loved. But here's the thing. People can offer criticism while out of love. They want to see you do better. It, the heart, And I think if you know someone 
has that intent, if you've known them long enough to have that level of trust, it doesn't come across as all that negative. If anything, I think we're instantly more receptive towards it. It's when someone is perhaps a complete rat bastard, (laughs) you bastards, about it. Uh, Case in point, a little compare and contrast for you both. Tale of two reviewers. One of them, SF Debris, a guy I I watch uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday is when he posts new reviews. Then there's a Mr. Metro Coor. What was his full name? Miss, uh, one sec. Mr. Metro. No, Metro Coor. Yeah, K U R. This is a guy who basically makes videos about other, other online personalities. Goes on the attack a lot. Now I do the comparing oh, contrast. Mr. Maker. Is that how you pronounce it? Well, there you go. Yeah. Mr. Whatever she just said. <laughs> Well, I'll just call him Mr. M because I can't seem to pronounce his name correctly. SF Debris did a retrospective on George Lucas and his uh, his creation process of the original Star Wars trilogy and the prequels. And it was a very fascinating in-depth look because he looked not only at George Lucas's history, but also what was happening to his contemporaries, how their careers were rising or falling. And how that may have influenced his decision making. Because you see a friend experiencing trouble, you're like, oh, I don't want to end up like that. What can I do different? I found it very insightful. And there was a a note of, well, actually said, I come not to apologize for Lucas, but to try and understand him. By contrast, Mr. M, or Safi will correct me on the pronunciation. (laughs) Medicare. Thank you. He went on the attack against what was then Channel Awesome, back before it had its breakup. And it might sound impressive that he would list all these sources from online until you realize that there are websites dedicated to basically cyber stalking. And so he pointed out everything they'd done wrong on social media or anything that seemed dubious. And at the end, he said, well, I hope this can serve as a, either as entertainment or a cautionary tale. Now, the entertainment I understand because people do actually enjoy seeing others brought low. There is a market for that. But I scratched my head at the cautionary tale because what did we understand about these people better having listed all these events? He's saying, don't do this, don't do that. But those are events unique to that circumstance in that moment. What's the greater message here? What's the the core? And I realized there was no effort to understand the people. Therefore, there's no cautionary tale. It's just, it's almost random actions. So here's the thing. Both reviewers, I think, could offer negative interpretations of what people did. But SF Debris made an effort to understand the person and the motives. And in doing so, offered a more complete view. Mr. Say it's Effie. Medicare. Did not. I think he felt that the acts would speak for themselves. But an act devoid of understanding is just random. And so again, I feel it's the effort of crafting a message and understanding the subject that offers true insight. And that's why I think sometimes you can dismiss someone's uh, negative feedback simply because they haven't made any effort to truly understand the cause or offer a deeper meaning or guidance. It's just a knee-jerk slap. We're getting both ends of the body involved, the knee and the arm. What did the five fingers say to the face? Slap! Or when somebody assumes your intentions and tries to make you out to be a villain. That's never good criticism. True, 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 true. But anyway, uh, this reminds me of another story. Uh, a friend of mine uh, recently who came here to stay with me for a bit for uh, Fiesta Siponicon, uh, Julie the Dragon. He did rent online when uh, Thor Ragnarok came out and saying that he didn't like the movie. And he had this whole spiel on his Facebook page talking about the reasons why he didn't like it. The LDR, I didn't read. So when he was here, I kind of asked him in person, asking, why didn't you like Thor Ragnarok? And he went and list down the reasons. And uh, being face-to-face with him, I had the opportunity to bounce off some ideas and talk to him about why and try to understand why he didn't like it. Uh, after we finished talking, I understand why he didn't like it and I could see his views on the reason why he didn't like it. I personally, for me, I love it because it's funny and whatnot. And him, he didn't like it because it felt wrong. I'm not going to go into it 
because like there's going to be a long story and I don't fully remember the whole conversation. But in the end, I came out understanding why he didn't like it and he came to understanding why I like it. I didn't change his mind and he didn't change my mind. It's one of those things where we understood each other and we respected each other's opinion. And to me, that's valuable where if you get to understand another person's point of view, you get more insight on said topic or said whatever it is that's going on. Well, it sounds like you both, neither of you felt threatened by the other's like or dislike. You didn't make the logical leap that if this person didn't like this movie, does that mean they don't like me Who, because I like that movie? And people do make that, that leap in logic. I noticed that your friend... uh Basically saying how they felt about the movie. It felt wrong to mm-hmm, them. Mm-hmm. And by the way, he's also a comic book guy. So he read the original and he understood the whole thing. So basically, this is a guy who's in depth knowledge kind of hurt his full opinion of the movie. So yeah. Ah, he's, then he's more experienced than I. I, I don't read a lot of Thor comics, but, uh, it, it also sounds like this person made a lot of I statements. It felt wrong to me. I didn't like the feel of the movie. Something along those lines. That's different. That's more of a preference. Well, and that's, but that's natural. That's, you know, that's a genuine critique. Here's the yeah. thing, though. And I'm not saying it's not valid, just, you know. Piggybacking, though, on, on what Safi said earlier about someone who tries to assign your intention or villainize you during their critique. There are times where people offering critique assign themselves too much authority. It's like, I didn't like this, and this person shouldn't create anything more. This person shouldn't be a comic artist or shouldn't be a writer. And that's the leap. Saying you didn't like something, that is valid. Mm -hmm. That is your experience, your reaction. But then to say this person should not do anything more, that suddenly you're giving yourself authority over someone else's life. Yeah, I mean, this you you mentioning this, Silver, reminds me of uh, one of our quote-unquote favorite MLP artists. I'm trying to remember. Are we talking Andy Price or... J- Jay yes, Foskett? thank you, Jay. I, I personally mm-hmm. do not like Jay Foskett's art style, but I'm not going to say, like, oh, yeah. he needs to be fired. Although, if I ever said that during any streams, like during any recordings, I, I apologize. I don't <laughs> actually here's the mean thing. it. Um, Jay, I, I, I mentioned this before. I, I, it feels like I'm apologizing for him, but no. Uh, Jay Fossigat's art style is an acquired taste. Either you like it or you don't. And here's the, for, for me, from my personal opinion, is like, I like his art. It's an acquired taste. It takes time for you to get used to it. Whatever he does in between with the um, copy and pasting, that's, well, beyond my understanding. I don't really mind it because usually he does that for cutie marks. So, yeah, forgiven. So, yeah, well, not really going to go into it. But in the end, he has a job. He's working for IDW. There's a reason he's working for them. IDW likes him and likes his art. So that's why they hired him. So, who am I to say that he does not deserve to be working on the ponies and whatnot? And there's something to be said that uh, you need to hear something negative to keep you motivated to improve. If It's kind of like the idea of an all-ice cream diet. It sounds great, but after a while, you're doing yourself more harm than good. Actually, it may not even be after a while. Uh, look at Spike. Oh, Spike. Oh, ice cream headache. Yep. But hearing someone say, look, you can do better on this... It can be a blow to the ego, but it's needed. Mm -hmm. True that, true that, because nobody really likes to hear the truth. And the truth is, we all could improve. Like for me, for Silver, for Sappy here, we all could really improve. But do we really have the qualifications to say so? That's the real question. Well, there's you know that old saying, I don't have to be a chef to know I've had a bad Mm -hmm. meal. I think people can say... If they've had a bad experience with a creative work, they don't have to be uh, certified artists or or graduated literary critics to say that. But I will say that knowledge, especially if you perform the same act, if you are a comic artist, like Pony Berserker's comic, he does good artwork. He does a lot of funny stories. I think that experience and that effort adds some validity to a comic where he says, this is better than doing this. Avoid colored speech bubbles, which, hey, I'm guilty of that. 
it adds some very real credence. A random guy on the internet who's never drawn a single thing in, in his or her life, that is, uh, it's harder than to take them seriously because like, how well do you know what you're talking about? And what by what authority do you say you should do this, this, and this? Mm -hmm. True that. I mean, here's the thing. Uh, we're, on the internet, we could do whatever we want. We can say whatever we want and we can comment however we like. And sometimes it's hard for us to listen to them because, for example, if someone were to comment on your work, Silver, and your art, and they say that, oh, this art is not good. You should probably do this, this, and this. And you kind of take the blow and decide, you know what, I'm going to see what this guy does for his artwork. And you suddenly see his artwork are just stickmans. And they're not ironic, they're seriously stickmen. And he does it and he's really f proud of them. And you wonder, like, uh, you're commenting on this while your work likes this? Uh, no, I'm not going to take you seriously. Here's the thing, I probably would note the uh, the paradox I think I'd still ask the question, well, does this person have eight points? And I might say, yes, they do, or eh, I'm kind of dubious. I'll give two critiques that I, I remember. One person early on said I needed to scream more. Scream? Yes, I think they wanted me to emulate the nostalgia critic and his anger. And I thought, you know, I one, I can't do as funny or shrill a scream as the nostalgia critic. So that probably wouldn't work for me. Plus, I'd be aping his style. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, not not like that. There are elements that I like in his work and I would try to integrate into my own, but not like that. Another critique was someone who said I sounded like a dead rock. <laughs> wow. And all I could all I could respond to that is in my head was as opposed to a live rock? Have you spoken with a live rock? <laughs> wow. Rock? Robot rock? And I, I, I couldn't add any validity to that because, one, I don't even really know what they're saying, mostly because I'm too busy la laughing at the idea of a, sounding like a live rock. Yeah, but I, I don't know. T to me, those kind of comments, you could throw them out because they hold no water. And the first comment where you should scream a lot and emulate the nostalgia critic, uh, mm, valid, but... That's not your style. So technically, you sh put it under advisory. That's what I say. Yeah, I took it under advice, but I ultimately decided not to follow it. This was from early, early on. And, and here's the thing with um, trying to emulate someone. It's never going to end well because you're not developing your own style. The MBS show here, when we first started out doing reviews, our style was kind of dry. We didn't really found our, uh, what do you call this, mojo. And we were all over the place trying new things, trying new styles. And it was rather... Are you going to watch that mojo? No. No. <laughs> oh, you. And we, we didn't really discover how we wanted to do things until later. I, I think we got the groove when Silver joined us. And we kind of fell into that... Uh, wave where okay this is how our tempo should be and this is how our flow should go and in between there's a lot of negative feedbacks and whatnot and self-discovering and for us we discovered our style is to be i would say overly positive but try not to be overly negative when it comes to a show that um, somebody didn't like or an episode that somebody really didn't like for example uh, Princess Spike I was neutral to it because I found it funny uh, I think James hated it and you too Silver I did not like that episode probably my the weakest episode in my eyes of season 5 hmm. so I personally try to be the positive guy out of the other two even if I get buried over it I still say how this few things entertain me and whatnot. And yeah, to me, I operate on positivity and see how I can influence the other two. Usually we fail, but hey, at least I tried. <laughs> Although I appreciate you talking about uh, Mojo. It's like, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's get our Mojo on. Oh, did you hear they're going to do part four? I'm 
hesitantly optimistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boys. But no, um, what about you, Sil? What, what do you think? Like, when you started the whole quote unquote reviewing uh, Pony episodes from your view and joining the MBS show, any difference? I think I've grown away from just saying, did I like or dislike the episode? And I like going more towards the bigger picture. And there have been people who say, oh, stop doing these archetype videos. I just want to hear about the episodes. And there are people who say, oh, keep doing the archetype episodes. I really love hearing about this. And I tend to lean towards keep doing the archetypes because I do enjoy doing them. True. And it's a thing where you're feeling a gap that's not present in the community where Nobody's really doing the whole archetype video. Nobody's really doing the whole, what you call this, uh, hero aspect. Uh, what, what was it called? Archetype? Hero archetype? The character archetypes. Mm-hmm. Nobody's really doing that in the fandom or for the fandom. Because usually when we see, especially back in the days, we get to see videos from, uh, what you call this, Tommy Oliver. We get to see from Digibro and their spin on reviewing things are hyper analytical, sometimes most sometimes negative, sometimes positive, but mostly negative. And people kind of enjoy those quote unquote videos back in the days. But once you came along, you did your own spin and hey, uh the Brony quote unquote reviewer fandom changed for the better. Then you got Dr. Wolf, whose character is in the Equestria Girls DVD. Wow. Yeah. And so on. So yeah, I mean, uh, you came along and did something good. A positive change, quote-unquote, for the fandom. So yay. I hope so. Technically, Dr. Wolf was here first. He started doing videos before I. In fact, I think I was actually kind of late to the party. You were. You were pretty late. But I still enjoyed your work anyway. Although, coming back to what a point I wanted to bring up, talking about understanding intention, because Safi pointed out people can try to malign or willfully misinterpret intention or try to villainize you by projecting false intentions. At the same time, when I receive negative criticism, I do try to understand, does this seem like someone who genuinely wants to help or is it someone who's looking to either boost their own ego or just get a laugh out of tearing someone else down? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's possible to, to go through life without at least trying to guess intentions. Or to to read up on someone and try to understand where they're coming from. That's why I'm not a big fan of uh, anonymous posts, especially on sites like Dirt Boru. Because if you have an account name, people can go back and see, okay, what has this person said about others? What have they? How have they treated other people? And you kind of that offers some insight. Anonymous, yeah, you can't really find out anything about them. They're hiding and even that action conveys a certain intention yeah, true the, uh, the internet is well, widely known for its anonymity and uh, usually anonymous people who comment tend to go all out without holding back and like you mentioned before some people really enjoy the breaking of downs and enjoy looking at the people breaking down so I, I remember uh, way back when uh, technically not for our fandom, but mostly for the Magic the Gathering cosplay community. There was this one guy, he really tore apart one of the female cosplayers and stuff. Like, I, I don't really remember what he mentioned, but the female cosplayer got really hurt and decided to quit. Like, no, nah, I, 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 mean, I have enough of this. Like, if I'm just going to get broken down like this, like, no, nah, it's not worth it anymore. I'm not having fun. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know the message for this one and I don't really know what to say but nah that, that didn't feel good like no that was just crappy I'm guessing that it if it probably took more than one one person's feedback to make her want to stop maybe she'd been harassed by others yeah, well from what I remember that guy was kind of a popular quote unquote YouTuber and he has his followers so yeah ah uh, and there's nothing like the YouTube is great for the illusion of insight. I mean, it's really sometimes it's hard to tell who's being sincere and who's just being negative to be popular. Because uh, Linkara in a his in, his tenth anniversary video said this when he started the Zeitgeist, 
fun word to use, <laughs> uh, the zeitgeist for reviews was be as negative as possible and be livid about it. The angry video game nerd, he master of hyperbole. Uh, nostalgia critic, yeah, he liked to scream and shout about how bad this was. But in more recent years, the the internet critic has shifted to actually talking about good stuff and what they liked about it. So I personally, I like that. I like that it's more rounded. True. And even the nostalgia critic has uh, toned it down on the negativity, even trying to understand what they were trying to do, or maybe add a more human spin to it, which I too enjoy. True that. I, I kind of enjoy the new critic now. Like, okay, obviously, old critic is more fun because he's very hyperbolic in his comments. So yeah, that, that's really fun. But it's kind of missing the point where you don't really have a message to point out. You're just screaming at something that is bad. It's like you're just screaming why you didn't like it and not really saying the reasons. But I think after he was rebirthed or reborn or redesigned, whatever you want to call it, he changed to, well, okay, this is why I didn't like it. I think it could be this and blah, 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 blah. His recent review, Rubber, oh, yeah, I didn't really like that movie because it was so pretentious. But he talked about it in a way that it made sense or it explains his reasons for why he didn't like it there you go and, and that's more approachable i think mm -hmm, true that he's still pointing out how absurd it is and also what the crit uh, sorry the nerd with his thing obviously he changed a lot uh the way he does reviews now okay he does uh curse a lot so that's uh, his mo but he doesn't really go into it screaming and hating it without explaining why Another thing that I've been uh, taught, and I still need to learn myself, like, when it comes to cursing, it's, uh, when you curse, not only does it show, like, unintelligence, it also shows that you have a low vocabulary, according to my grandmother. Oh, which is true. Which is true. It, it can be true in some aspects, but at the same time, you can get creative with cursing. Or, heck, if you really want to curse so bad, make up your own words. Yes. <laughs> That's one way to get out of That's it. Right. True, true, true. By thunder, by crikey. <laughs> oh, but okay. Um, getting back on track. Um, silver, <laughs> get us back on track. Get us back on track. Well, in truth, I feel like I I'm run the gamut of uh, what I want to talk about when people are just negative. It's true that being negative at first gets you a lot of attention because people think. You're, you're a person without limits. You're not afraid to say what other people are afraid. But then give it enough time and it gets old. You kind of realize, hey, negativity is all this person has to offer. And it starts to take on a very artificial feel. I think when you're negative about something because it, it genuinely shocks or frustrates you, that will come through, whereas a consistent negative tone will eventually undermine you. It's not to say just be positive for giggles, but throw in something you like. Throw in something praiseworthy. Because honestly, if you're going to say that someone's doing this wrong, it's great if you can show someone doing it right. Uh, yeah. A good example of a reviewer who does that is Angry Joe. Uh, his reviews back in the days were really shouty, shouty, angry, angry, because, oh, he's Angry Joe. But now he does a nice balance of, okay, here are the things I like, here are the things I dislike. Uh, I'll give it prop if it deserves it. I give it a down if it deserves it, and so on. Yeah, and by a similar notion, I stopped watching Jim Sterling after a while because of just negativity. But my favorite review of his was a commentary on how physicality with the Doom character actually created more personality than some first-person shooters where the character has a speaking role. The Doom guy is very physical in his expression, and as a result, you understand his character better. And I thought Sterling did a very good job uh, explaining that. And, well, even for us here on the MBS show, uh, we tend to lean on the more positive sides of things. But hey, when a bad episode comes along and we couldn't really defend it, we kind of make it shown. I think, what was the episode that we didn't like? Episode number 7, season 8, number 7. Uh, what was that? The non-compete clause. Ah. <sighs> yeah, I don't think any of us went to bat for that one. Yep. I, I mean, 
do you mean uh, the student six were good? Yep. That's about it. But um, there is also one other question that comes with the negativity. If you're always saying this episode was bad, this was awful, I, I hate this, I hate this, this is this is such a bad show, sooner or later people are going to ask, why are you still watching it then? I have no idea. Uh, I have an explanation for it. I, I'm not sure it's true because uh, in a morbid way, they want to see the show improve to their standards. If the show does improve it to their standards, that means... Okay, the writers are not that dumb. I mean, they're evolving. Blah, 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 blah. But in all honesty, in the end, the show is created for, quote-unquote, the network. The writers are doing what the networks wants. A good example for this is the new Sonic Boom. A lot of people hated the new looks. A lot of people really dislike how they look. How with the over-buff knuckles and whatnot. And a, a lot of things that came in and... A lot of people complain. I, for one, gave it a shot and watched the episode and highly enjoyed it. It was really entertaining. I personally haven't given it a look, so eh, I I can't say. It, it's fun. It's a fun mm-hmm. show. That's all I'm going to say I'm about too busy it. being entertained by pastel horses and giant robot lions combining. The giant robot lions has ended the season. Now it is what? Uh, blood-sucking vampires? Yeah. Oh, yes. I need to watch that. I've watched the first season. But now we're getting off topic again, but we all like different things and we don't like certain things. And it's just sort of balancing act. A bad episode is an opportunity to talk about what could work or how it could be better. If it's just, I hate this, this is dumb. I think you've missed a very important opportunity. True that, true that. As reviewers, we have, well, okay, I wouldn't say power, but who are we really? Uh, as, re- as reviewers, we have our opinion to share because, hey, we've been doing, or oh, we have seen a lot of things. We've seen the patterns here and we could just say, oh man, it will be great if uh, X happened to Y character in Z episode. So it will be really, really fun if that happens. But unfortunately, this is what happened and we have to take it. I remember James once told me this, never insert your idea into the review don't um what you might call this reflect your opinions onto the episode and i find it strange when he was the one doing it because it was like what you might call this um hypocritical yes thank you so i find it very strange but i tend to follow that rule because if you're inserting your wishes to set episode so it could be like what you want you're not really looking at the episode for what it is that's my view really i tend to take a slightly different view i i I do every review is basically my opinion and influenced by my thoughts or indeed what i would like to see i just try to be really clear that that's what these are my thoughts not objective fact i don't believe a reviewer can be totally objective yeah, maybe that's what I got confused by what he mentioned and how he acted. So, but in all honesty, I think when we mention something, oh, I wish this could have happened, I think it's us wanting it to happen and it's our own opinion. And that's why I think when we say or when we start off the conversation with, oh, I wish this could have happened or personally, in my opinion, uh, it would be better if this happened or in my opinion, this would have gone great. It's hard to know. I mean, everybody's got their own style. But I think in our true style, we've gone on for quite a while. We may have gotten a little distracted, but we came back on point. True, 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 true. Mm-hmm. But I think it's time for final thoughts. Ah, uh, yes. So, Safi, how about you start us off with final thoughts? There's not really much I can say like when it comes to my final thoughts other than with negative criticism. Know what to look for. Like, if somebody presents you negative criticism, even if it's just a pile of nonsense, there is something to, you know, take out of it. Not all the time. But, I don't know, I think you come out a better, stronger person when you take uh, negative criticism instead of just shoving it off. Like, for example, as an artist, like, some people can't take criticism whatsoever. So... 
they they basically just go on about how wrong you are and then don't take anything away from what others are trying to say of them, even if it's good negative criticism. So just look with an open mind, unless they're just trying to derail you and say how terrible you are as a person, even if it has nothing to do with the content you make. That's how I feel, anyway. Good, 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 good. And Norman? I live by this uh, lesson that I've learned from when I was young from a cartoon deer. And said lesson was, if you can't say... Well, no, it's not deer. It was a rabbit. Um, if you can't say anything nice, don't say nothing at all. But we don't really work or we don't really operate that way. We have to say something to express our feelings, to vent our frustrations. And I do understand why people do give negative feedback or negative comments. I do understand because I feel the same way, but I personally hold my tongue or <laughs> hold my fingers from typing them out. If said person is asking for a comment, then yes, I'll give it. But if they dislike it, then I'm sorry you asked for my opinion on said work. And if I don't like it, I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, it's nah. It looks beautiful. It should be in a museum. Oh, no, no. Not going to lie. If it's terrible or I dislike it, I'll say, no, I, I don't like it. It's not my style. Then, yay. But you know, honestly, for you guys at home who are listening to this now, if you are typing it in, in the comments below, be sure to remember that, hey, we're all human. We do mistakes and we do this for fun. And... The time and effort that we put into this is, well, to entertain you guys at home, to make you guys laugh with joy, rage with anger, and also cry of, cry with sadness and whatnot. Like, we're doing this to entertain you guys. If you like it, that's awesome. And if you dislike it, well, tell us why. We'll read it in the comments below. I'll be sure to reply to you and say why we couldn't do the things that you want us to do because for reasons probably yes silver what about you my friend in my eyes a critique is as much an art form as a painting or a book or any other form of expression the more effort you put into it the more care you take with crafting it the better the odds that it will be well received and maybe have an influence that said when you encounter negative feedback or someone being very critical of your work it is hard to take in the moment, which is why I recommend go off, do something else, cool down, and then come back to it, and then make a choice, because not all criticism is created equal. There are times where you think, hey, maybe this person has a good point, I can try and do this different, or maybe if I did this better, it'd work. Or you might also look at the person, look at their track record, and think, you know what, I don't think this is anything more than an attempt at this person trying to engage in self-aggrandizement. And then it's like, well, then it was never really about your work in the first place, was it? Yeah, true that, true that. I mean, they're just getting, quote-unquote, popular via others. Like, they're writing on others' coattails. That's the word, right? Yes, indeed. Hmm. So, it's a judgment call, but the big thing is to try and approach it with as little emotion as possible. Just take a little time, cool off. You are not under any time constraint or deadline to interpret or view this. You just have to uh, ask yourself, am I ready and am I able to review this without letting my emotions control me? And that's a challenge, but I think you're up to it. True that, true that. It's hard for me to say, don't let your emotions uh, steer how you apply your comment or whatever it is, but hey... <sighs> It's not human if you do that. It'll be strange and robotic. Beep, burp, burp, burp. I guess you can say it's a matter of principles. Err, which is so convenient because that's what we're going to review next. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like we scripted this. Wait, what? <laughs> yes, that's the next episode we're tackling. <laughs> yes. So next week's thing, um, next week's review, we are going to review season eight, episode 14, uh, a matter of principles. So yay. See, it works well. We are the king of segways. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> Huzzah! But yes, I'll have I'll have some very negative things to say about that episode, including the ending. I don't even remember it. 
Uh, oh, you're in for a treat then. Yep. I, I'll try to be Is really positive. Is it the positive. one with Discord and Starlight? Yes. Jeez. Oh, no. Uh, I'll try to be positive because I kind of like this episode. <laughs> well, you, Yeah, you I fo- kind of like it too. <laughs> Ooh, then we'll get to compare. I kind of. We'll get I'm to- in the middle. <laughs> We get to compare reactions and review styles then. Mm-hmm. So we hope you folks will cu- tune into that and uh, it hopefully enjoy the discussion. Yep, but yep. in the here and now, Norman, who can we thank for the continued support of the MBS show? Oh, well, I'd like to thank you guys first. But hey, before that, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. My personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Do follow the Twitter, my personal Twitter account, or the show's Twitter account, because I've been tweeting a lot about projects. You know, I've been tweeting a lot about Fiesta Siponicon that recently happened. And... um. Kelly Sheridan, the voice for Glim Glam, she liked one of my tweets. Yay! <laughs> oh, that was fun. And on my personal uh, Twitter, I kind of reblocked my Instagram food pics. So that's something fun. I, I like to take pictures of food. Uh, if you want to critique on them, go ahead. But I'll have to say that those food were nice and delicious. That's all I have to say. And uh, getting back on the pony, I noticed that um, Nielsen Ingrid, the voice for Mod Pie and the sisters, she liked one of my food out of nowhere. Like, I, it was like, wow. Amazing for me. Like, mind blown. So Star Trek. I know. And where can the people find you, Silver? Well, you can find me on DeviantArt under MLP-Silver-Quill. I'm also under MLP Silver Quill on the Twitters. You can find me under, again, Silver Quill or After the Fact on YouTube. And every Wednesday I will have uh, uh, either a written review or an editorial posted on EquestriaDaily.com. And Sefi, how about yourself? You can find me drawing cute stuff and whatnot on DeviantArt and Twitter. And maybe you could check out my YouTube channel even though it's dead right now. And and you could buy me coffee because you may like my work and want to support me and make sure I don't die of starvation. <laughs> Winter is coming. It's only three dollars. Can you get the sappy three dollars? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> and you can find them all at Anime Christie. Yay! Just look up Anime Christie on Google anywhere. No space. You'll you'll find me. Uh, I guarantee it. Oh, so awesome. And also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And stay Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on polyflive.com. This show that you're listening to now is available on iTunes and Stitch Radio, the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. Well, it's here you're listening to this now. I really appreciate it. Thanks also if you want, do subscribe to it on iTunes and Stitch Radio. And like Silver mentioned before, people to thank. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. I think that's a really good deal, ain't it, Silver? A week's early access? It is. It is. Yeah, you'll be the talk of the town by knowing the inside jokes before everybody else. Not, and Norman has not paid me to endorse this because I don't get paid. <laughs> Neither do I. I. Like, like one. Norman, are you going to let me starve? Well, I'll say this. A friend of mine, Twilight Genesis, mentioned this to me. You guys are stuck in the fungeon. Have fun. (laughs) In the fungeon. Yes. Although, your, your winter is coming made me think of a good song for Safi. Oh, God. (laughs) Christmas is coming. The goose is getting fat. Please put a coffee in Safi's hat. (laughs) Nice. Uh, please. But I support that song. <laughs> this song is endorsed by Sappy. <laughs> Not endorsed by me, but I support it. Yay. There we go. <laughs> but anywho, talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank myself, Lag, Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Lurker Cat, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And I want my coffee. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun review of our discussion podcast. See ya. Adios. Coffee. 
Yeah, that ending could have been better. You guys should really do something more funny and more entertaining. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry the coffee talk didn't Java with you. Well, well, maybe I'd be more funny if you gave me money. <laughs> I, I can't. <laughs>